scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. Please give it to us and then we'll get into the teaching this morning. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. I'd like you to read it when you see it projected. Ready? One to read. The key expression as he ought to know that means there is a standard for a student who fails the exam he does not have to fail all the questions to fail the exam he only just needs to not pass enough and even what he passed does not count to the overall he still failed are we together if you have 10 questions and you get two and fail eight you didn't score zero, but you still failed. That means if they are to categorize you, the person who did not write the exam and you who failed will still stay at the same place. It is dangerous to know little. He knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. The light in your phone is light but not light enough to swallow up the darkness in this room so if this room were in complete darkness and you put on your little phone we would see that someone has his phone there but not enough to give us light you need high level spiritual illumination high level the stadium kind of spiritual illumination that can turn every darkness to light. May that be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we began to look at the factors yesterday that are responsible for enlargement and increase. Having established a fact that increases God's will for us in Christ. The first we said was the seeing eye and the hearing ear. Please do well to get the teaching. If you were not here yesterday the seeing eye and the hearing ear hallelujah it matters that we see well in Genesis chapter 13 when you read from verse 14 to 17 the Bible says in verse in chapter 12 that God called Abraham from or of the Chaldeans to lead him to a place of destiny a land that he would show him and there were blessings that were connected to his obedience. Are we, are we together? Yes. And the Bible says that Lot, on hearing that Abraham now had a covenant with God, the Bible says Lot went with him. Now, re realize that God did not call Lot. God called Abraham. But Lot said, I will go with the one who is called. And by the time we get to chapter 13, they were so blessed and increased we did not even know who was called and who followed again because they had listen carefully thirteen and verse fourteen the bible says that they got to a place where there was such increase such abundance and there was trouble now between the men of Abraham and the men of Lot and Abraham said listen 
we be brethren. Let there be no strife. He said, choose. Wherever you see that you prefer, go. If you go this way, I will go that way. If you go that way, I will go this way. Lord should have been afraid. What is on you that makes every direction bless you? That's the question Lord should ask Abraham. And the Bible says, watch this now. I'm just showing you the power of the seeing eye and the hearing ear. The Bible says, Lord looked towards Sodom. That was where his eyes took him to. And he settled near Sodom. The next time we we'll hear about Lot, he was crying for help in the midst of Sodom. Are we together? Hmm. Now, when Lot separated himself, the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot separated from him, lift up now, not your feet, not your hands. The first thing that must be lifted up for your destiny to be lifted up is your eyes. Even when your feet cannot lift, even when your hands cannot lift, let your eyes. He said, from where thou art, not where you need to be. It's all right where you are, but lift up your eyes from the place that thou art, northwards, southwards, eastwards, and westwards. Verse 15. For all the land which thou seest, not all the land that is available, the land which thou seest to thee I will give it all the businesses which thou seest all the opportunities which thou seest all the realms and the dimensions which thou seest listen your portion is not what is available your portion is what you see All the land which thou seest. This is a prophetic word for someone. There are many things available. But the one which thou. The realm in the spirit. The realm of the anointing. The realm of grace. The realm of excellence in ministry. Which thou seest. The prayer life and dimension. Which thou seest. The level of excellence in the word. Which thou Yes. crying for what is available is not a wise spiritual approach you cry for what you see that is the assignment of revelation to make you see what God is saying because faith is predicated upon your ability to see what God is saying hmm. hallelujah so, when you see, then you'll be able to make giant strides consistent with that which you have seen. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll jump into our discussion for the night. Hmm. In Numbers chapter 13, the extended reading is 1 to 33, but we'll read the first three verses, then we'll jump to verse 33, just to establish this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. He says, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I will give unto the children of Israel, of every of their tribe, of the tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, everyone a ruler among them. Verse 3. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, all those men were heads of the children of Israel. Are we together? Now, go please to verse... Okay, let's see 25. Let's start from 25. 25, just to get the perspective. They returned from searching the land. Remember the promise that God was going to give it to them? 26 now. A quick reading. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and all the children of the congregation... Of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh they brought back word to them and they showed them the fruit of the land next verse and they told them and said we came unto the land 
whither let me use this whither thou sendest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it 28 nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. 29. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the seaside. No land is empty. We're coming there. Caleb. Oh dear. Watch this now. Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. Last three verses. But the men that went up said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report. What's it called? An evil report. Any report that downplays God's ability is an evil report. They brought an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people we saw, all the people we saw, all the people we saw all the people we saw not all the people there all the people we saw are men of great stature let's read 33 together now 33 one two read and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come out of the giants and we were in our own hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on we were not in god's sight not in satan's sight we were in our own sight as grasshoppers This was the conclusion of our vision that we were like grasshoppers before them. No matter the only kind of prayer you can pray for this kind of a person is the prayer of mercy. Because this one is already defeated. We were in our own sight. Hallelujah. A man was going into a land for the first time and when he stepped into that land he met a farmer the farmer was farming and he said um gentleman good afternoon the farmer replied good afternoon sir he said i hear that this land is a wicked land with all kinds of evil things is that true and the farmer kept quiet and said you are right and the man walked through a few hours later, another happy, vibrant man came and said, Good afternoon, sir. And the farmer said, Good afternoon. And he said, I hear this land is a beautiful place with all kinds of opportunities. The farmer kept quiet for a few minutes and said, You are right. And the man went in. So for every one of them that came with their perceptions, the farmer said, You are right. It is the assignment of vision to select what is consistent with what God has said. In the same land where there was killing and destruction, there was still prosperity and increase. Your vision is an editor. It can edit away that which is inconsistent with the word of God and create a picture for you that equals victory. The seeing eye and the hearing ear. That was a recap of yesterday. Let's get into today's teaching. The warfare dimension of enlargement. Hmm. Light of the world, you step down to, into darkness. Will you open my eyes? Let me see. 
That's my prayer, Lord. You're the light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. Can you repeat that part? Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Let me see. Two more times. Let it be a prayer. Open my eyes. Let me see. One more time. Open my eyes. Let me see. Amen to that prayer. In the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 8 from verse 22. Jesus. It is true that God gives us territories, physical territories, spiritual territories, financial territories. But the Bible is very clear as to the fact that there are no empty territories. So I am teaching you the spiritual technology that dislodges every enemy that is occupying your territory and grants you access to possess that which is yours. Are we together? Even the hearts of men was not empty when Jesus came to die. He needed the hearts of men. But the hearts of men were already full of evil. There was something he did to dislodge darkness and bring in light. Even God was exempted from what I'm teaching you right now. War is not a negative um, it's not generally an evil concept. War is simply a strategy that establishes dominion. Every time there is a contention over dominion, we see that there is war. And the idea of war here does not just mean carrying guns and killing. Are we together? One of the strangest scriptures in the Bible is, and there was war in heaven. You would think a place with so much dexterity should never have any reason for contention. It says there was war. The Bible is not afraid to let us know that there was war in heaven. So let's read Luke chapter 8 and verse 22. Follow very carefully. I'll read 22 to 25. Then somewhere along the line will continue. The warfare dimension of enlargement now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them let us go over to the other side of the lake and they launch forth keep that scripture there the bible tells us the basis that it was their instinct and their desire to advance this is jesus making a profound statement thank god for the lands we have conquered but let us go over to the other side are we together now so understand the basis this story is founded upon this knowledge their desire to go over to the other side the bible says and they launched forth next verse but as they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy a storm of wind with Jesus the son of the living God the very incarnate of the father desiring to go to the other side and the Bible you thought where were the angels where were the ministering spirits? We're talking about the Son of God desiring to go to the other side. And the Bible says, there came down a storm of wind. Next verse. Let's hurry up. And as they came to him, they awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. And then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging water and they ceased 
and there was calm. Now listen very carefully. The Bible is saying that Jesus was leading the people to the other side. There are many things that would not happen to you simply because you are not interested in going to the other side. There are many people who are free of challenges. It is not because you are free. It is because you are not moving. There are certain challenges that are report cards. They are systems of attestation that you are in motion. If they did not desire to go to the other side, there would be no need for them to experience a storm of wind. It is not unusual to have challenges. Challenges many times reveal to you and confirm to you that you are on the path to destiny. It is not always that you are on the wrong path. Now listen carefully. Did you know that when they encountered this storm of wind, the same energy it would take to go back was the same energy it would take to continue. They were confronted by a storm of wind. Now listen. A storm is made up of two things. Number one, wind. Number two, water. Hmm. Are we together? The wind is the invisible part of the storm. And the water is the visible part. But they all work together to create that storm. When Jesus got up and he discerned that there was a storm, the Bible says the first thing he did was to rebuke the wind. Because the water was under the influence of the wind. The, the, the wind you could not see was what was making the water boisterous. Now listen carefully. You have to understand the formation of storms. There is always an invisible part to a storm. And that is the part that powers the visible part. There is always an invisible part to the job issue. There is always an invisible part to the health issue. There is always an invisible part. The Bible says the first thing Jesus did, he's teaching us how to rebuke storms. That every time you discern a storm, don't focus on the water. The water is only acting based on what the wind is making it do. The financial situation is only acting based on the wind, the spirit that powers it. And the Bible says Jesus rebuked the wind. When he rebuked the wind, then he rebuked the water. And the Bible says they, the wind and the water ceased and there was calm. Now, the next verse please. He said unto them, where is your faith? And they being afraid, one that saying to one another, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the water obey him. The winds and the water obey him. The winds and the water obey him. Are we together? 26. Be patient with me. I'm building something. 26. The next verse now. And they arrived. Hallelujah. Regardless the wind, they arrived. That is a powerful statement there. And they arrived. And they They arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. The Bible uses a very interesting term, they arrived. You would think that were the end of the story. They arrived. 27. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what happens when you arrive. <laughs> And when he went forth to the land, there met him a man out of a certain city which had devils a long time. I thought they arrived. 
Listen. Haven't gone through the storm of wind. The Bible even testifies that I arrived. I made it. And then the next person to welcome me is a man full of devils, no clothes, no house, living in tombs. Is that how you greet somebody who arrived well? Where would I be if you left me? Where would I be? Where would I be if you left me? Now, watch this. Please do not miss what I'm teaching you. Open the eyes of your spirit. Let's go back to the story again and understand what the Bible is dealing with. Let us go over to the other side. Remember? Let us advance and enlarge and make progress. And then they get into the boat. And then they meet this mysterious storm of wind. Jesus rebukes the wind. Rebukes the water. There's come and the Bible says they arrived and the first person to welcome them was a madman who had been there a long time verse 28 let's rush now when he saw Jesus he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice and he said Jesus of God most high I beseech thee torment me not 28 for he had commanded and Jesus cried out okay 29 now for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man you notice that every time Jesus is dealing with issues he starts from the spirit if it's the storm he started from the wind if it's this man now it was the spirit he says, for oft times it had caught him and he was kept bound in chains and fetters. He broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. 30. And Jesus asked him saying, what is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine on the mountain and they besought him that he would permit them to enter into them and he permitted them watch this <laughs> then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake notice the first people to suffer as a result of the authority of Jesus was the business people in that land it meant that they were excelling because of their fraternity with a spirit the moment something started happening to the spirit some people's businesses started going down that means their businesses were thriving the devils went out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently a steep place into the lake and were choked when they that fed them saw what was done they fled and went and told it to the city and into the country be patient then they went out to see what was done and they came to jesus and they found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of jesus clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid 36 they also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed we're reading to 40 37 now then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them for they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again listen so what did he do 
he said, let us go over to the other side. Went through all that labor, met a madman, healed the madman, entered the ship, and returned back. Does that make any sense, Jesus? What are you teaching us here? Next verse, let's finish up. Now the man whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to thy own house and show how great things God had done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. The last verse now. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. Listen, now that you've read the story, let me explain to you. So Jesus begins his mission and says, let us go over to the other side. Are we still together? And as soon as they began, just help those under the anointing. As soon as he began the journey, the Bible says he met a storm of wind. He rebuked the wind, calmed the, 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 the water, and they arrived. And then he meets this man. Do you know that was the only man Jesus went to the other side to meet? All that labor to meet one man, so that man represented the other side. That was Jesus' idea of the other side, to meet a madman. Touched that madman and said, I'm done. Now that you are free. And the Bible says that single man, one of the synoptic accounts will say, that he published it across a decapolis 10 cities that means there is a relationship between the storm the spirit the madman and the deliverance of 10 cities so what you called wind was the same spirit that was in the man and because that man's destiny was the destiny of a deliverer in the mind of jesus that man was equal to the city and he was what the entire journey the entire journey please listen to me listen to me so there are men who are equal nations there are men who are equal nations the same energy God would give in ministering to a thousand people, five thousand, ten thousand. He invests that energy. He risks his life and the life of the disciples only to go and meet a madman. My question is, couldn't he speak from where he was and said, madman, demons go. Why did he go through that journey? Met the madman. listen his desire was to save 10 cities but he discovered that the destiny of the 10 cities were captured in one man that he did not even need to do any crusade now the demons knowing before time they searched for the person who had the mantle of deliverance over that city and they bound him listen carefully that man's oppression was not normal. It was in his prophetic destiny to be an evangelist and to save 10 cities. And the demons intentionally bound that man. As soon as that man, for as long as he was bound, the Decapolis was bound. For as long as he was bound, is it possible that there are nations that are under siege because individuals are under siege? Listen, I want to teach you something very powerful and I want you to pay attention. How can a nation be bound in spite of the fact that Jesus is there? But one man. You see that the demons did not waste their time attacking everybody. No. Could it be that the attack in your life is revealing something? Why did the devil leave everyone in your family? help them please 
that out of 10 people in a family so this is what has followed your destiny why is it different with me why is it that others get a job and when it is now my turn uh -uh. hear me please listen to me if you do not understand what i'm teaching you there are many mad men you see today not mad in physically mad there are many people in trouble today their trouble is not because they did any wrong any wrong themselves they have entered situations because the realm of the spirit has seen the end time role that they have to play in god's program and so there is a, a launching of all kinds of attacks on them and their families I'm speaking prophetically to you I want you to listen you see there was a man who was born blind and they came to Jesus and said who sinned it is not always a sin problem this is what I'm trying to point out to you who seen that this man was born blind was it him or his father and Jesus said neither but that the glory of the Lord should be revealed it is not always a sin problem do you know why this is powerful so that when you see people going through storms you don't sit down and conclude that it's because they do not have faith <clears throat> when you see the madman in Gadara you do not even know that your own salvation in that city is tied to his destiny hallelujah please hear me there are some of you right now please help this lady I just saw oil being poured on her head listen to me I came this morning to raise warriors there are people who must know how to walk in the established victory that is in Christ let us go over to the next business let us go over to raise our children let us go over to liberate this family from poverty and decadence and the realm of the spirit responds to it things begin to happen in your life that you cannot understand hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.